Somebody asked me to rank the top three defenders on the 49ers defense Sunday. Uh, probably going to say Nick Bosa, and that's going to feel like a cop-out answer because he's going to probably be top three any week. So he was dominant, and that's to be expected for a player who's going to be in the running for defensive player of the year. After that, Talano Hufunga, if, if Bosa's 1A, Hufunga's 1B, and he was dominant. I really want to focus on him today, but let's talk about this guy right here, Javon Kinlaw. Number 99, lined up over the left guard here. He is going to get a lot of one-on-ones this year. And if he gives the 49ers any type of pass rush, they are going to be very, very difficult to move the ball on. So as you can see, you would think that this plays a screen with how quickly he got in there. But those are the type of flashes that you want to see. And that's you want Will Mac to pick that, like if we're if we're being honest there. So uh Kinlaw was great, and we're we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about him today. All right, so the very or sorry, two plays later, we see Kinlaw again. And this is on Samson Evercom's sack. So, again, he's going to get a ton of one-on-ones. You just want to see him push the pocket and win. On this play, and this was pretty much the end of the Bears, drop back passing after they realized that they couldn't block the 49ers. So, you get pressure from the edge. Samson Ebicom, you got he know Bose is coming around. And then you see another move where, so he's beat the left guard. And Kinlaw's also beat the right guard on two pass rushes in a row. That is what you want to see. And he's winning in different ways. So you saw a quick arm over the first time. And on this pass rush, uh, he kind of bull rushes the right guard at first. Tevin Jenkins, who's a good player, going to be a good player. So uh, I really loved what I saw from Kinlaw in this game. And we're gonna I'm going to show you more reasons and more plays why. All right, so Talano Funga finished week one with double the amount of run stops as the next safety in the NFL. He finished tied for fourth. Among all defenders in run stops, that is pretty tough to do as a safety. So obviously you have to play in the box quite a bit. But you'll see later on in this video that you know he's he's coming from depth and making tackles as well. This play is going to go unnoticed, and it, he's playing a little hide and seek here. But uh, let's just kind of walk through the play. Teams run motion, and we know this. We, we watch Kyle Shanahan. Why do they run motion? They want to see what the defense does. They want to see the, the defense either overreact or like this. By taking the receiver and motioning him back this way, you are going to get now the safety in the box. Most safeties, defensive backs, they're not used to playing in the box. More than likely, they're going to be more passive than you'd expect. What I want you to watch is, so his job, Talano Funga's job right here. Let's go back to the start here. So he's going to be like the cutback fold player, assuming that they're running to the left, to the offense's left. They come back. Really good job right here. So when I say hide and seek, it would be easy for Talano Funga. So you, you see the motion. It would be easy for most people, most defenders, to just chase the motion. That's bad eye discipline. Or you see the back take a step this way, you're probably going to over pursue. I feel like Hufunga all game did a really good job of just playing, doing his job, playing his gap. He does that here. Doesn't overrun the play. I thought Hufunga also did a pretty nice job this game of just making open field tackles. And with the conditions, you're bound to leave your feet. You're bound to just be in a position that you that's just uncomfortable. Like I don't think people understand that they were playing in a puddle, essentially. If you took a step, the water would come flying out. So here's Hufunga right here. The Bears are going to run a screen to the bottom of the screen. And it's essentially Hufunga one-on-one with the running back as he has to take on a blocker. So if you just pause it right here, he is responsible for blocking Hufunga. The lineman's going to come out here. So it's essentially, because he's running off Emmanuel mostly. Ball's in his hands. If Ufunga doesn't make this tackle, easy first down. And then it's Mosley probably, what, 15 yards down the field if he gets past him. So don't have to worry about it. He was a missile. Like, he was a torpedo all game. His effort kind of goes without saying. But I, th I think his trigger... People, they're focused on, you know, running a slow 40 or whatever. But when you can recognize what the offense is doing and you're not passive, it makes a difference. So that's how most of the game looked for Hufunga. All right, more hide and seek from Hufunga, who is right here. And it's really just, again, being disciplined. He is a cutback player. So if he over pursues on this action right here, it would be like you would understand why a player 
would see this action go here. Here's the lead blocker. Here's the running back. Aziz Alshari does a good job of blowing the play up, by the way. But you wouldn't fault him for, you know, trying to chase, trying to beat the guy to the spot. Instead, he's patient, doesn't overrun the play, and makes a tackle. It doesn't seem like much, but I just feel like his instincts are so far, you know, far and above of what you would expect from a second-year player at this point. Now on the very next play, because it's a passing down, you get to pin your ears back and rush the passer. And what does that mean for 97? Good luck. You almost feel bad for 70 there. He has no shot here, so... Right here. <laughs> so his hand placement is unreal. I don't think people appreciate just how good Bosa is at everything. Like, yeah, he's powerful. Yes, he's very agile, but... Like the technician, everything looks perfect. So as soon as his hands are inside, it's it's RIP for the left tackle. Walks him back, sheds him, sack, get off the field. All right, here's probably Hufunga's first wow play. So the Bears are going to try to run a toss. They're going to try to get outside. And this receiver is going to come down and crack block him. So essentially blindside block Hufunga. I imagine Mosley gives him a crack call so he knows what's coming. And that's why that's how he's able to knife through and make this play, but just watch this guy. Watch again. Watch his trigger. Watch how quickly he recognizes it. Recognizes the play. Just no shot. These plays are sustainable, I feel like, and that's why it's easy to take. That's why the 49ers had a 26% success rate in the first half on defense, which was tops in the NFL. Sure, like penalties is ours will kill them. Uh, that You know, that you guys saw the game, but this play is – about as good as it gets from a safety. Just recognizing the role of the wide receiver. Let's watch the wide receiver on this play. Is lunging. He has no idea what happened. Where did he go? Before the running back can even essentially get a couple steps downhill, he's already having to deal with Hufunga in the backfield. So he doesn't get the tackle for loss because he misses the tackle, but this is why all tackles for loss are not created, or all missed tackles aren't created equally. So, I mean, th that play kind of sums up what you would expect or not expect, but what the future might look like for Ufunga. Just absolute missing. All right, so here we go. More motion. Why? To get Ufunga in the box. Just that's good offense. So you want to have – you bump Warner out of the box, and now you have the wheel linebacker and the safety into the box. This guy again. So Kinlaw was called for holding later on in the game. Probably could have been called for holding in this spot here, but again, he's he does a really good job of eating blocks, not getting moved, and that was the theme for most of the most of the defensive line when they had the proper footing. That is, but Kufunga doesn't make this play without Kinlaw. You can see him, <laughs> you can see him grabbing and holding, but that's what he's doing. He's doing his job, right? That's what you're supposed to do: free up, eat the double team, free up the second level defenders so they can run and make a play. So Hufunga gets credit for the tackle here, but that, that's all Javon Kinlaw. He is so tough to move. All right, another play where Hufunga makes a tackle near the line of scrimmage, at the line of scrimmage, Nick Bosa. Watch him. On this play, it's kind of strange just because, see, the receiver comes in the, the screen. He should be blocking Hufunga, but he just runs right by him. And the reason that it's strange is because it's not like, go back to this, the top, there's not a lead blocker. The tight end's coming across the line of scrimmage, across the formation. So he's just free. I think the, the impressive play here is Nick Bosa makes his man miss. And, of course, Armstead. Like, for these plays to work, these tackles have to eat double teams. And they are fantastic. And you're not going to get any glory doing that. But uh, the 49ers defense, they run as those tackles go. So I just check out the play here. Um, Hufunga is unblocked. Bosa does a nice job of not running upfield getting back into the play, and they make the tackle. Okay, so I mentioned how Hufunga had six run stops. He should have had seven. Uh, this, he didn't have seven because this guy didn't give him a chance. So uh, the Bears are just going to run a little same side run here. Bosa is being double teamed right now. So the tight end and the tackle have him. The tackle obviously works to the linebackers at the second level, but I mean, you leave – a tight end one-on-one -on -one with Bosa, and this is going to happen all year. Just doesn't have a chance. Resets the line of scrimmage, makes a stop, 
And that's pretty much what Bosa looks like every play. All right, last one here. So, again, Hufunga, top of the screen, another TFL. He gets a wider th- – uh, whenever the wide receiver has a, a condensed split like this, he's probably going to be involved in the running game in some capacity. And that's what Shanahan does. So uh, he's going to try to crack. Again, I imagine Mosley gives him a crack call. And that leads to Funga knifing in the backfield and making a tackle for loss. All around outstanding game. I thought he did miss one tackle. But, I mean, think about all the other plays that, that have happened so far. And I lied. This won't be the last one because I didn't even show the interception that he had. These are all just the run plays that he makes. Again, just his instincts. You get a crack call, you know it's a run, you don't have any pass responsibilities, you can knife in the backfield like that. His trigger, the way he finishes, I imagine it's going to lead to some forced fumbles and some good some good fortune for the 49ers. All right, here is the interception on the last play I want to show. So the Bears are in empty right now. Here's what Justin Fields sees. Here's what I would see. So, all right. Safety walks over the running back. It's probably some type of man coverage. I have oh, look, two guys stand, three guys standing up here. Probably going to get some type of pressure. At the snap, obviously, the post-snap movement. So this is just, this is very simple. This is just cover three. He has the deep third. He has the deep third. He has the deep third. And it's three buzz is what it is. So this is the safety and he's buzzing right here. This The reason that this play works, and this is a big pet peeve of mine when DBs don't find work. So Hufunga is responsible for any, anything coming to the seam, anything coming to the curl, like this 10 to 12 yard area. He doesn't have any work. So he, there's no routes in his area. So what does he do? He relates to a receiver. Fields is thinking, like, let's, let's look at what Fields is reading here, what routes Fields has. So he's got that inbreaker right there. He releases it on time. It looks open because he's not going to make the play. He's too far away to make the play. What he doesn't account for is the safety coming from the other side of the formation. Just a great job of baiting fields. Mm. Great start. Honestly, a hell of a start for Funga uh, to to the 2022 season. Obviously, he's probably not going to have an interception in six run stops every game, but... The fact that the flashes that he showed, just like this, this play in coverage, this this is sustainable. Uh, the run stops, those are transferable game to game. Uh, safety was a huge concern coming into this season. No Jaquaski Tart, obviously Jimmy Ward is hurt, probably going to be out. Uh, but th- these type of plays, man, it those are, I don't want to call him like a special talent, like a future Pro Bowler, but uh, it's hard to ignore how well he played. 